Hey everybody, it's Margo here at my favorite quilt store and I've been joined by Risa McCann. How are you doing? I am doing great, Margo. Happy to be here today. Yeah, she is a, a person who comes in and cuts for us. So she mans the uh, cutting tables and uh, cuts your fabric that we ship out to you guys. So she's an integral part of the team. Well, thank you, Margo. So today she had finished up a quilt that I wanted to show you guys. I, I've done the top myself. I just don't have mine quilted and bound yet. So we thought we'd show you hers. So this, I just love this quilt. It is called um, the a Buffalo Check is what we call it. And it's a, a um, fun quilt that's easy to put together and make. Very. It's very, very fast. And the great thing is it's a size for a um, kid's quilt. Baby quilt makes a lot, like makes a, a great gift. It's my gift to me, Margo. I know. I can't it wait to get on the couch it makes, and cover up with it. It, make, it makes me happy, too. So your quilter did a great job of quilting. She did hexes in this, yes. which makes it really, really fun. Yeah. So this quilt um, was just finished quilting. We're going to take you through the steps of how to make it. Great. And um, show you a little bit about it. So I, I love the stripe binding on this because I think the stripe binding adds... A great to me it makes it pop. Um, yep, makes it pop too to me. So let's show them your back also okay, real fast before sure. we get to the top. For sure. The back was fun. The back is fun. So she used Sketchy. Yes. Which is this is a different a print from the same line. And um, then used some extra squares that you had fussy cut out. Absolutely. And your extra squares to make the back backing a little more um, unique, like, and, unique different. and different. So that you had some extra fun pieces in it. So the back is just as fun as the front. Absolutely. Plus, I love the way the back has all the explanations as Tula did her designing. Right. She wrote about the different animals and things that she wanted to incorporate in the design. Exactly. Knowing that makes it fun for me. Yeah, I think I think so too. So okay. let's take a look at how we how we make this quilt. So this is a free pattern online on our site that um, is up. It was um, made, um, put together by Mary Jean Murphy. So here is the actual block right here. I want to show you the block first. It's a white and a black and then two mm -hmm. mediums, which makes it very, which makes it uh, the overall print look like a buffalo check because it's got a bright a black and a white and then two mediums. So the whole quilt is built around that particular block. Correct. So what what um my favorite um tool is the um for this is the five and a half inch um or five inch um squares. So I started this quilt because I, and I decided on five inches because the charm packs are already made and they're five inches. The so, blacks and whites. The blacks and whites. So I so that makes this a super simple quilt to um, make. So I had the um, white and the black. that are already charm packs that you can buy. So this is pre-cut. So all I had to do was figure out how to fussy cut my fabric. So um, with this green ruler, what I do is I can take a design and I can put it, like I can decide where I want the center of the design to be in the quilt which the ruler has a little X in the center where the, um, a little circle in the center where the center of the block is gonna be. And I could line it up on whatever motif I wanted. So I would cut this motif here, then I would scoot Duplicate over, the cut same it the thing same thing over and over. over and over. So it takes a little more yardage and it ends up looking like Swiss cheese. When your it's piece finally that you're your done. piece that you right. got when you're done. But you can figure out what you want. So, you know, you could put this heart in the center. If you wanted a heart in the center, you could put, if you want the, um, this particular one is actually two peacocks. The peacock goes, is right, right here, and it's got a heart here, a heart here, and a heart here. So what you do is before you begin to cut, you decide what you want in the center and what you, your focal is. I was gonna say what your focal point will of be. This one. So this one was, we probably should have started with this one because this one by far is one of the harder ones to figure out. Let's take a look so, real quick at the skunk. Is, so I, I know I did this one as the heart in between the two right here as my center of my block when I cut this out. Okay. So I another one, I think it is, see it, is, it is easier with stinky. So let's take a look. This is it's this is little so stinker. Cute. And um, when I fussy cut him, I wanted to make sure that his snout was inside 
the um, half um, the quarter inch seam quarter allowance. Quarter inch seam allowance. Right. So you, you can kind of mark that up. So when I find the mark that I want in the center, I know it's always going to be that same mark when I move to the next one. So I normally exactly. only cut um, through one thickness of fabric at a time. This is two thicknesses of fabric, but I normally only cut through one. And that's why you kind of need a half yard of fabric, which is about this much fabric is so that you can get a number of motifs right. out of them because you've got the other side too. So you can probably get six to seven cuts out of this particular one, six to seven different Plus, blocks. Margo, if you look, this row is going that way. This row of skunks is going that way. So you want to pay attention if small details bother you. Right. To if, how many go into the left and how right. many go into the and, right. And I think I cut all of my skunks go in the same direction. Okay. Is that what I did? Okay. So they did, didn't butt noses with one another, even though that would be really cute in the quilt too if they had their noses butt up next to one now another. And when you put yours together, did you follow all the peacocks in the diagonal row? I did. So that's the, the one thing we want to show on this. Row. I did. Okay. Let's um, so real then, quick go back to the panda. And then here's the panda. And so, um, of again, we've got it upside down. We do have it upside down. So it depends on how many pandas you want. And again, you're going to have to look at the quarter inch. Uh, Seam, seam allowance. allowance around the outside to decide what you actually want in your um, in your square. And I want to say that I did mine. I did mine with three. Three. I did mine with three in it too. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll show you that on the quilt. So let's get the quilt over here. Let's look at the front, and we can show them a couple of things. So now that we've got the now that we've fussy got cut. fussy cut cutting down. So here's what you did. So you did different. So here's a a, a um, stinky little stinker. stinker. Little stinker. Sorry going this way. Here's the face of a little stinker. This one's going this way. You have one going this way. So you did it where they were going opposite directions. Right. And you know what? It looks, it, it, it doesn't make a difference. It's what makes you happy. It, exactly. And then the lemur here is in the tree. And here's a lemur in the tree. Here's a lemur in the tree. So the lemur is another thing that you have to be more particular about if you want the lemur in the tree or not in the tree. Right. Or whatever. So then we also have the, um, Let's turn it this way and we can right. see these. The pandas and the peacocks. The pandas. So you the can pandas. See, right, yeah. Here, so you have three pandas and a lot of different colors in it. Here's the peacocks. You did the, you did the same thing where this is kind of in the center. I tried. And then the zebras. Yeah, there you get just an essence of zebra most of the time. Right. But you can get two or three in. And then the hexes. So the interesting thing is like when you do this one, this and this, you can just cut one five-inch strip. And cut right. it straight out of that. It's not fussy cutting. These you don't fussy cut right here, these these particular ones. And so for me, like you, I did these in longer rows because they weren't fussy cut. So I didn't have to find as many of the um, repeats of it. So I did these, um, you know, in the larger rows. And I did this one straight down the center because it was the easiest. And then I just followed the colors all the way down. If I had greens, I put the green here. If I had Ooh. pink, I did that. If I did purple, That's I did way that. way too much for so me, So I followed Margo. the colors all the way down on mine. But um, what I did do, I used the black hexi here and the gray hexi. I know. I see that you put the gray hexi in there. That's it. I think that adds a lot to it too. Yeah. So you can use other things. So on our website, we will we do have a half yard bundle of all of the main prints of these uh, prints. We also have in stock From Line Works the five inch ruler. If you don't have this five inch ruler, I always keep this on hand because the other thing I use it for is when I have scraps of things. I cut them into five inch squares. I use a lot of five inch squares. So this um, good idea. Yeah. So when I have leftover scraps, if I if I don't have a project for it, I, I cut into a five, buy inch, a five inch ruler. I cut it into a five inch square because I can slip it into a charm pack. Yeah. And a charm a, a charm quilt at any point in time. So I cut these as in my leftover, especially like at the end. Um, I know when you cut around a quilt and you're squaring it up and you have all right. that extra backing. I definitely do it on the backing pieces okay. and cut all those and put them in my, I have a little, um, a, um, little tub of nothing but five inch squares. So I keep all my extras in there. So I find this five inch ruler very, very yes. helpful. Okay. So, um, it's one of the staples in my sewing room. So this quilt is very easy to complete. The hardest part that took me the most time was fussy cutting the animals and deciding exactly which ones to fussy cut. Did you use your design wall? I did use a design wall for to. this. I had to, and mainly because the white and the black 
were kind of confusing to me when I was putting it up to, to figure out where the block actually was and to keep it going across and then the, these going down. And I actually just sewed it directly off my design wall also. And I sewed it um, in rows across yes. this yes. way. Um, yes. And so the, these blocks. For, the blocks first and then I would attach to and then I'd sew this whole row, then this row, and attach those two, and then attach it to this. So that I would make sure that I was going down in the right one order thing that you with them and didn't me, get them messed up. One thing that you taught me, Margo, was every now and then to stop, use my iPhone or smartphone. Smartphone. Take, take a picture of it on the design wall because when you look at it on the phone, I immediately saw I had completely flipped a block. Exactly. On the phone, but I didn't necessarily see it when it was on the wall. Exactly. And that's why about halfway through a quote before I sew the rows together, I normally do take a picture of it. I put it up, up on the wall, take a picture so that I know I'm getting it in the right order. You taught me and, that. And, and then you can see where your mistakes might be. Because the, the white and the black really show up as... Is yes. a, a dominant force in this. And then the rest of it's a little more blendy. So it's harder to tell where it was. But I, I did have a hard time keeping the black and the white going in the right direction. Yeah. I, I will admit that. Well, because when you get this backwards, it it, it still looks it good. Still looks good. <laughs> <laughs> you can't but it tell. wasn't until you had the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly. a fun project. It a was. Very, I think I'll do it again. I, I think so too. So I have seen it where you could do two colors here and then someone's put a plaid in here and had the same color. The first time Mary Jean made it, she used uh, just three colors and used, um, you know, okay. the, the, the dark and the light and then the mediums were all the same throughout the whole quilt. I like this one um, because I just like this line work. So I wanted something fun made out of the line it work. It certainly showcases it. And it de definitely does. And I think this works great as a baby quilt. Yes. Ooh. So it gives them a lot of color and interest to look at and that kind of stuff. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this quilt and that because uh, I think you did a fabulous job. Thank you. Thank and I, you, thank we hope you. that you get inspired to make something like this. And right. So again, the pattern is going to be on the website, and soon. it's called uh, yeah, it's on the website, and it's called um, uh, Buffalo Check. Okay. And it's by Mary Jean Murphy. We'll have it featured in a blog post, and then we'll also have it online. It's a free digital download. You just download the pattern and get rolling on it. Great. Okay. Thank hey, thanks, Marissa, for joining us today and bringing us your beautiful quilt. Thank you. We appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Happy sewing, everyone.